farmers collectors. Before I start that, uh, let me make two uh, statements. The first one is, uh, uh, we think, we very strongly think that uh, uh, even in the resource poor areas, there is a significant amount of business, agribusiness, uh, with agriculture inputs and outflow of agriculture produce is available. If you just do the mapping of inflow and outflow for a cluster of 10 to 15 villages known in a resource poor area, the figures will be astro I mean, astronomical and you will be very, very surprised that, wow, this much exists. I didn't know this. If you go to even high production system, you will be even, even, even more surprised. If you add the allied sector and if you add the NTFPs in the very marginal areas, you will come up with similar kind of features. That's one. And number two, that if we really want that our small farmers, which are about 85 percent, are to be, you know, beneficiary of market, extension, services, credit, whatever you say, then there is no other way but to organize them. You will, we need a platform so that that platform becomes the kind of conduit to reach out to them. Otherwise, it's just not possible. So with these two statements, I will just uh, show you a few slides. I will just uh, not go through it because uh, Dr. Supal Singh has already said it, so no, no need. Also not this one. Yeah. So the model here is about a building smallholders collectives to integrate them with the value chain. It has worked with the milk, uh, but no serious effort so far has been made on the other, I mean, agriculture in general. And that is where we try to uh, do something. Uh, it's all started with the MPDPIP initiatives in other places, a World Bank funded project. Uh, and uh, they were working in food districts, they are forming these common interest groups in the villages. And uh, it was 70 percent of them were basically in agri and allied sectors. And uh, we were providing them some kind of technical assistance on the agriculture sector. And uh, as part of all the technical assistance, what came out that uh, we uh, tested these many varieties, crop varieties, and some varieties were found as farmers preferred varieties. So therefore, we needed huge quantity of seeds to distribute or disseminate these varieties in a larger way in food industries. So what we did, we reached out to the agriculture department, they said, no, these varieties are not recommended by the agriculture university, so we can't do it. So we did not have any other option but to find out some other institutional management to do this. And that's when this idea of farmer produce, producers company came in our mind. We thought that we'll do with these cooperatives, when people say, no, no, there's a new app, Companies that that is that is more liberal. Let us start with that. So that's how we came into this farmer producer companies, and it started as started as as kind of federation of the common interest groups of the villages. Now, so the areas where it started, the fourteen of them. This is the area typically semi-arid. You can easily call them resource poor area, crop intensity is very low, irrigation is very low, soybean is the only cash crop, but soybean and, and soybean is the only crop, let's say, people sell soybean and buy food. Yeah, so that kind, of, yeah, it's not that soybean, they are, they are, they are uh, rich farmers. So, in general scenarios, it was that. So, from 2006 to 2009, with 14 producers companies, we started off and Average members per company is about 2,500 to 3,000. And thinking was that at FTC, there should be one farmer producer company per district. That was the original thought. And uh, we provided a management team. The model that we tried to emulate was that, you know, a moon model that every, every producer company should be supported by a management team. So there is an agribusiness professional, a person with accounts background and that kind of an agronomy background, production background, that kind of thing. And uh, yeah, I, I 
and uh, ASHA and DPIP together will try to create some kind of enabling environment in the government, in the Madhya Pradesh, through the government of Madhya Pradesh, like you know, giving them some kind of one, one time uh, uh, working capital support, some uh, infrastructure support, some money for uh, the cost of the management. <laughs> Now, the real expansion started from 2010 onwards and if you see now that they, have, they are all over Madhya Pradesh and it is not only ASHA or the MPDPIP, now this is uh, by Rural Livelihood Project, other NGOs, Small Farmers Agri Business Consortium, they are doing, so it's like you know, NFR, there is an enabling environment and people are, people are uh, taking this up. Uh, at the moment there are 40 functioning Producers organize producers companies at the moment and uh, will be about 55 to 60 by 2012. An average member has come down because there was a realization that having 2500 members or organization is not visible because you can't really reach out to them. So therefore the number has come down to 1000, 1200. Now, what are the typical business myths? It is not a typical, you know, identify a crop and then you uh, walk through the entire value chain like what has happened with the milk. This is basically a small farmer's business. It's like Sanjeev says that a bit of everything. So small farmer's crop system is like sub kuch kuch kuch. So small producers organization business is also sub kuch kuch kuch. So it is like you know, seed production, then there are agri input supply, then extension services, Trading of agri trading, aggregating inputs, uh, uh, I mean, uh, produce, uh, and then sell, contract farming, uh, everything. Because it's like, you know, I mean, you maximize profit by doing several of this. Average uh, volume of business or the, uh, the work of business per company is about 3,000, 3 crore by, the, by their fourth birthday, and they are profitable. I mean, they are. Ample evidence now to prove it that they are profitable, they are doing well. Total turnover was about 100 crore in 2011 12, and we are expecting about 150 crore by this year. Uh, that is the kind of uh, growth one can see. And I, I just also want to tell you that uh, uh, this uh, 16 of these companies are going to start the MSP operation with uh, Government of India this year for the pulses. And, uh, <coughs> Something like 100 crores worth of MSP will be happening through these 16 companies. This is this is uh, uh, I mean going to start very soon about 15th of December. Yeah, and uh, these companies are producing one lakh quintal of certified seeds for the uh, National Seed Corporation. They have proper uh, agreement with them, soybean and. Uh, Chana, these are the two main products. They also provide extension services to over 50,000 farmers for the better cotton and responsible soybean. These are two crops of the market link and third party evaluated crops. They are also bulk, bulk suppliers of the agriculture inputs. They have uh, proper arrangement with the market so that they get a quota from the market as uh, the cooperative right. market. They, there is a business linkage with at least 75 big and small agribusiness companies. I mean, you name them, they are all their partners, and they have, there is a kind of a business arrangement uh, between these companies and the and the uh, producer companies. And there is a new initiative for like you know, bringing the spot exchange market at the producer company level. And uh, and then the BCI Peta Cotton Broker. I just uh, I thought. Uh, just to give a glimpse of the kind of business that can happen. Okay, look at this. This is the last 10 days business by four companies for the cotton procurement starting on the 16th of November. And these are the four companies. Rajpur, Kasrawat, Tikri and, and the other one, Ojai. They have sold 530 metric tons of Cotton, better cotton, and made already a business of 260 lakhs. And today I have got a figure that is already 238 lakhs. We are expecting 50 crores worth of business just by cotton trade. And also let me tell you, this is not even 5% of the cotton that they are targeting. 
Wow. So that's what I said. I started off saying that the volume of business is so much, we just can't even think. You know, that, that much is the opportunity or, or the volume of business that we business in the rural areas. Or do we go back? So what is the member's benefit? Our estimation is, look this has to be, this has to be uh, further research, but our estimation is about 10,000 rupees per year at the, at the uh, member's level, uh, by direct and indirect. Uh, this is a bit anecdotal based on certain evidence that we have, but it needs further research. Over 95% of the members, we did a kind of a customer satisfaction survey and they said hey, we would like to remain with these companies and we want to grow with them. And that's, that's a kind of thing and uh, learning is that our size should be kind of uh, a manageable range of 1000 to 1200. Business should be a mix of everything as I already explained this point. The general agribusiness to start with, specialization will be a little later. Don't start with a tomato value chain or you know like guard gum value chain. There is a problem. So it's better to start with general business and then specialization. It could be a wing later on. Uh, I think the point is develop your strength here first and then go for the specialization. Because specialization will be always a very very risky affair. And input supply and extension without these two services. APCs do not make any relevance to the to the farmers because there's so very critical services for their farmers, for their members. Management team is very very important. Without them, it cannot happen. As number of the APCs they grow up, we need to also think of a kind of a support mechanism above the management team because they need the market linkage with national and international mm -hmm. level, and there's a higher order support is required. APCs, uh, FPC or FPCs may be considered to leverage bigger market or uh, in our case the government of MP policy support was timely and very very critical because they came forward and provided good support. Promotional cost comes to about rupees 10 lakh per FPC per year including uh, capacity building cost. Per member cost would be about 1000, 1200. Minimum three years of support is required. And average benefit for member is in the range of 7,500 10,000 I have already said. Right? Some strategic intervention that work uh, in this example. Uh, setting the concept with the various stakeholders to create a support ecosystem in Madhya Pradesh that really work. We really have to, have to work hard. Pursuing with the government of entity to provide policy support and also working with the different subsectors like you know with the chartered accountant firms, with the company secretariat firm, with other service providers, that was very important because without them uh, it, will, it will not happen. Now I think uh, I will not go to this and what are the uh, needs to be done to scale it up, I think uh, let, let us, let us uh, concentrate after this point. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ashish. I think that was a really uh, nice other interview.